Welcome back, everybody, to OCD Hi-Fi Guy. What we're going to talk about today, or what I've got to show you that actually is pretty killer, is, okay, so you know how we use uh, an active crossover here. That's what you see right here. This actually divides up the frequencies so that we can put the lows uh, to the bottom amp right there. Those are both the power supplies. But uh, to the bottom amp gets the lows. That's for this uh, sub-tower right there. And then the uh, the top is for the highs, which goes to the Maggie panel uh, over there. So um, it's necessary that we have what's called an active crossover right in here. And um, and this is a very good one made by uh, Phil Marchand of Marchand Electronics. And uh, what this is, though, the build, and most uh, that you will see, they have, we're going to go to closer here. Um, see the little chips on the on the um, on the board there. If you can see them, let's see. I'm trying to get my finger in there. Uh, whoa, uh, right there. Okay, so there's right there and right there. These are little op amps, is what they're called. And essentially, those little guys are like miniature amplifiers, a power amp, and it just boosts the signal basically. And they have the same sort of characteristics as any amp. They've got distortion and all sorts of different, you know. And and you hear some over here for this side, and there's some on the input. Um, and if you really, you know, are OCD like me, you, you listen to the, uh, um, uh, 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 to those op amps and they have a glare as compared to designs that are discrete. Discrete means instead of that little chip and having that whole amplifier on silicon, you actually make a complete, you know, buffer stage. You make a little, um, miniature amplifier using all resistors and capacitors and so forth. Um, we have talked about it a little bit with the Burson audio things that you saw. Those were, um, that's what that is, is that's an, um, uh, a discrete uh, audio amplifier. Um, and so I went ahead and contacted um, Phil. I know him. He builds these things. And um, I requested that he do an OCD build for me um, because, you know, op amps freak me out. And I don't want the glare. I want to make sure that I know that nothing is, 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 uh, is um you know any of the nasties are coming off of the op amp chip and also if you rec if you look in here you will see that this is a balanced and single ended okay so the xlrs are on the bottom the top is single ended but what happens here is right in that little section we've got something that converts the balance to single ended uh, and then it runs through this uh, uh through this uh, circuit as uh, um single ended you can tell because there's left and right left and right Okay, um, a uh, differential design uh, would have two left and two right, two left and two right, because it's carrying negative signal and positive signal, negative signal and positive, so negative positive signal right, negative positive signal left. Um, that is a more um, discrete type way to do things. That's how these amps are done. Uh, it's called truly balanced. So that means um, in this rig, okay, so I have a truly balanced output on the Rockna which is, whoops, right here. That is actually a differential inside. The circuit is actually, there's four R2R modules, positive and negative left, positive, negative right on the output. The Vermeer, as excellent as it sounds, is not fully differential. It's got a single-ended output, which is crazy. The Vermeer is a good um, example of how it just doesn't matter about the circuit. Like you can sit here and go, oh, balanced is better no matter what. You know, but the truth is really it's the implementation of that circuit. Vermeer is a, not only is it a, uh, a Delta Sigma, but it is also single-ended on the way out. I still use the balanced outputs, but it's single-ended, um, and then they convert it to the balanced on the way out. So if you really want to be a purist, you go differential the whole way through, or you go single-ended the whole way through, and you don't mess with conversions, because conversions are lossy. So um, I prefer to have balanced all the way through and through. So the Rockna output is balanced. It goes uh, from the, uh, and, and then the, um, that's the DAC. Uh, the output from, from this crossover and all the way through the crossover should be the same. Uh, and then um, and any preamp that we use, if we use a preamp, it should be differential. And then the amps from Jeff Rowland are definitely differential balanced amps through and through. Uh, and so... I asked Phil of Marshawn to go ahead and see, ask him if he could create me a fully differential crossover that was discrete, too, and used no op-amp chips. And he said, as a matter of fact, I can do that. So I plopped down some engineering cash, and um, so he would do it. Um, and then here we've got the result, which is phenomenal. Okay, so it does the same. Well, it doesn't do the same thing. Okay, this is a two-way. This is a four-way. Okay, so this is a four-way completely discrete, complete differential balance crossover. 
This thing is a Mac Daddy. So in a little bit, we're going to have that right there. We're going to have this thing full filled up, and then it's going to be right there. And it's going to take that place. Then we will be able to to put to to quad amp. So instead of just two amps on each side, we will be able to have four amps. What that does is, and it, and it could be four channels. It could be a four channel amp each side. Whatever it doesn't have to be four monos, but it enables us to put an amplifier on each specific part of the speaker design okay so that means like right here we will have one frequency bandwidth that'll go right to this driver that'll go straight to the the amp will go straight to there it'll have no crossover in between and then the amp will go uh, straight to this part which is well you see there's two in here right here is the woofer right here is the mid-range so we'll have one amp that'll cover this part one amp that'll cover this part and then one amp that'll cover this tweeter Okay, so that's the real, 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 as discreet and trick as you can go, is you have a mono block for the tweeter, a mono for the mid, a mono for the woofer, and a mono for the sub. So you have four mono blocks each side, and that we already have two. We're going to have to find two more. Um, I happen to know where I could find a couple. They won't be Rollins, I don't think. Not, not Model 12s, anyways. So um, that'll be another thing, too, is we'll have to match them up. We'll have to put them with something good. But a lot of times people do, they'll put on the bottom, they'll use the, the, the solid state amps and they might use tubes up top, you know, to just give some different flavor. But um, either way, this puppy is going to be down there. And look at that thing. That is like uh, really one hell of a design. And you can see how it's all laid out. Um, we're going to have four channels. Um, and then you can also, you can still use this thing as a two or three. You just... You don't utilize the middle the middle channels, so um it's it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be awesome by the time. We, oh yeah, another thing too. This is this is the way I, I call these things out. So when I order this, you know, I I tell him the spec. Otherwise, he'll just they'll make it like they normally make it. You know, they're they're used to making things with. Okay, look at that PCB. Um, I don't know if it's hard to see, but on the on the back of that um that switch, I'm, I'm getting in the light there. I don't know if you can see how I do this. Maybe this way. Okay, can you see how thick that is? Okay, now check out my board. I don't know if you can see that. Um, okay, so <laughs> that thing's like paper over there on this side over here. Whoops, that switch has something that, that is as thin. It's like you could, if, if that board, that big board, was made this thin, we could flex it in our hands. And look how thick this thing is. I mean, it's it's this puppy. It's not flexing like I I, I can't even I can't even if I press down on it. There's look. Okay, there's no way I can even bend this thing. Cause it's that thick okay and in order and, and because i have it made thick like this i also double up the copper so that means the foil that's on here that they make this out of they have a certain weight of it however many ounces and um, i doubled up the foil so that means that the little traces okay if you, you can barely see them but see the traces on back those little lines okay so our traces are laid up thicker and we have thicker copper so it means um we're not restricted in any sort of way in terms of thin little traces that aren't going to ground well or whatever. Um, I actually, what I else I would have requested that I that completely escaped my mind, um, but on this board I think will be okay, is I usually have them double up the ground, like beef up the ground planes, make them twice as wide. Let me get some real fatty ground planes on there. Um, and, um, and, and so, but either way, and if you can see, those are the, the through holes. Okay. So it's through hole, which means you solder through a hole and the, the, the through holes are plated all the way through, um, to the bottom. So these solder pads here. And so, so it's, you get a complete, nice, good solder joint it, because it's plated all the way through the holes. You have to ask for that. Otherwise they won't plate the inside of the holes. And then the solder only sticks to the top. It doesn't go all the way through and out the bottom, which is what gives you the killer solder joint. Um, and so I had, I requested that through holes. They did that anyways, but, um, it was, uh, I just wanted to confirm. So this is a killer, killer board. I can't wait until we get this thing stuffed. It's going to have all Wemas. Um, I asked for a black solder mask. Normally they make theirs green. OCD Mikey likes his stuff black. Um, just like, uh, uh, Alberto with his AGD monos. I also like, um, Wima, as you can see those little boards that I soldered up with the Wima capsules, red ones. So you put red on here and it's red and black and it looks bad to the bone. So we'll have, and then we're using military, um, level resistors. Those are all, they're tan. 
So they're like these little guys that you see. I don't know if you can see those little tan guys. Those are like the um, Dale resistors. They're super good. So we'll do the whole thing. It'll be it'll be with uh, those military resistors, and we'll have uh, Wemas in here that'll be all red. So it'll be really killer looking by the time we're done. Um, and um, yeah, that's it. Um, I get all giddy giddy goo goo over crap like circuit boards and call them beautiful this is like beauty to me you know it's really it's funny but um that's the way i see things um anyway so uh we will definitely have some beautiful sound out of this uh once uh old philly and i sent him some cool i got some vintage knobs that we put that we're going to put on mine and um i got a different switch and i got all these little things man i call out the spec on everything i'm changing the art on the front so i'll have my graphics guy do the art and layout and it'll look just different and mikey tized and um so so this so it'll be pretty cool by the time we're done um anyway so that's the latest um and then uh i don't know if i have enough time tonight to do this uh but uh we've got the the standing this is like where we left off last time i think what i could do quick is to show the difference of sonic between um oh if you want to see inside the cdt3 check it out i have this thing opened up so that mechanism right here um, you know what? I think I'll turn this into a separate video. That way I can put a separate title on it and stuff. But, um, nevertheless, we're going to come over in here and, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll compare, uh, those monoblocks are really pretty killer. See, this is the one I was just talking about with the black and red. See how Alberto does his the same way. He likes black solder mask and red Wemus. I'm on that same tip. And as soon as I saw these things, I went, okay, this guy's cool. He's, he definitely pays attention to the stuff like I do inside on the boards. What does it look like? So, um, uh, nonetheless, that will wrap it up. We are really wrapping up our crossover piece. So we'll have this thing in the system in no time and see how she sounds. All right, 10-4, see you later.